What's up again guys? Yeah, it's me, your friendly neighborhood Dovakin and welcome back to Let's Play Wasteland 3. And uh, before we begin, be sure to hit on the subscribe button for more great videos. Okay, in the last episode, we entered the Steel Town Gates and got ourselves in a couple of battles. The first one was against the Ghost Gang. But uh, we didn't even fight at all. Cause uh, as I said, for this DLC, I'm gonna be doing a pacifist run. Wherein, killing humans is a big no-no. And we don't have disruption weapons yet. However, in the next one, a battle for a stinking toilet, literally, there were no holds barred. So we decimated a pack of big ass worms in sheer perfection. In today's vid, we're gonna find out the troubles of Steel Town, if there are any, by meeting with CEO Abigail Markham. Also, we're gonna resolve a few side quests that we got from the refugees. Alright, let's play. Welcome to Steel Town. Good to finally meet you in the flesh. Abby and I thank you again so much for dealing with those pesky bandits. Ugh. You've made Steel Town better for everyone. Oh, I love Carla, but I'm afraid that'll have to wait until you've talked to Abby. If you can just give me your names for your badges, I'll send you right to her. It certainly comes with a sterling reputation, but I still need your name so the CE knows who you are. Don't worry, I'll just read them off your uniforms. Okay, got it! Here are your badges. Now, just follow the blue line and you'll find Abby in the control room. Or, I mean the dark blue line, not the light blue line. Actually, you could go straight, it's shorter that way. No, wait! You should probably take the blue line after all. The computation engine said that's where the line should be painted, and it's never wrong. Oh! Also, if you're looking for an exciting career in the wonderful world of heavy industry, come back here after you've talked to Abby, and I'll give you a placement test. Somebody took their happy pills today. Well, I think that went well. Wow, it's big Greetings, in here. Greetings, fellow employees. Welcome to the Steel Town Job Placement Center. Hi, looking for a job? Now, now, remember what we talked about, Demi. Start again. <sighs> Hello, I am Oluwa Demilade. Welcome to the Steel Town Job Placement Center, your gateway to a wonderful life of meaningful and gainful employment here in the industrious and exciting city we call Steel Town. Though, if you are looking for the mess hall, that's two floors down. Today's meal is algae meatloaf, fun guy surprise, and a gravy of sorts. Now, how can I assist you? Take the job. This guy who's a full first name I won't even try to pronounce, but they call him Demi, will give you a couple of ridiculous but funny jobs. As per the working stiff side quest, do them until you get promoted to a fire suppression expert, and that will take place down in the factory level later. Anyway, there's another interesting interaction with him if you have toaster repair 10.
Oh wow, did a Russian nesting doll just come out of that toaster? I've heard of those. Let me know if you might want to trade it. See, I'm kind of a nostalgia head and collector. I try to get full sets of any little ephemera from before the deluge. I have all these boxes of McToasty's breakfast cereal. I wanted 20 so I could send the box tops away for the prize. But I don't think I'll ever find that many, so I'd rather have a complete nesting doll. Neat thing about this cereal? It glows a little because it's radium infused. Who knows what it might do for you if you eat it? So, what do you say? Great, here you go. These are the cereals that we got, and the corresponding embiggened buff. And for a melee character, obviously, this is beyond OP. Also, it transforms the user into an actual giant. Anyhow, let's loot up the back room. Excuse me, but if you are new employees, all paperwork will be processed in the usual time. I'm not sure you were authorized to take that. For your paperwork. Are you absolutely sure you're authorized to do that? You did say the computation engine authorized this, correct? Excluding non-lethal slash disruption weapons, because obviously they serve a specific purpose, I find the other new weapons of this expansion quite underwhelming, except for this one. Although its base game counterparts only require 2 AP to use, this 5 AP brawling weapon's damage is just insane. And there's even a craftable elite version of this one with even more damage. Now, along with the embiggened buff that I featured earlier, I think this DLC is showing some love to melee characters. Too bad because I don't have one. Idiot strikers downstairs. Now, this is our first disruption weapon. But uh, don't worry, because uh, we'll get a bunch of them later on. By the way, if you have the required skills like I did, this is the perfect time to access this locked room, Markham's office. Because uh, if you don't do it now, it will only become available again near the end of Steel Town's narrative. To open a secret safe, just follow my lead.
another info on Steel Town's new weapons. They are quite gimmicky. Cause uh, this one fires like a grenade launcher with a small circular AOE. And others, some pistols in particular, are like flamethrowers with cone AOEs. But again, they are still underwhelming. Cause uh, when compared to their base game counterparts in the same level, their damage is just inferior. The new armors on the other hand is a different story. They are more than decent. And we just got the recipes to craft the Elite Cryo Exo Armor Set. Blue. Abby. Blue, I... I miss you. What... What can I do to get you to come back here? You know what you need to do. You need to dismantle that prison and let those people go. People? They're not... Nope, I'm not getting into that now. That's not why I called. I just... I just want things to be like they were. That's all. I want that too, Abby. But you broke that, not me. If you want it back... Well, I already told you. I can't, Blue. I can't. This is the way to the future. This is the way to our dream. Sorry, Abby. Maybe our dreams aren't the same anymore. I, uh... I'll see you. Goodbye. That blue person seems to be a significant character. Maybe we'll find out if we go deeper in the story. Anyway, let's finally talk to Markham in the control room. If you let me rebuild the partitions, we may be able to stop the transfer. For how long, Di? You said they'd never be breached, and it was less than a year before. God damn it! What is Ludlow doing down there? I can't hear myself think. Should we save this for another time, Administrator? The factory situation seems to require immediate attention. No! No! We have to solve this. The gangs are coming, and without the CE working, we're not going to be ready for them. Let Ludlow handle it. It's only his fucking job. Administrator, you have visitors. Huh? Who are you? I told Benny not to... Huh? You're the Desert Rangers. The one Saul sent to check up on me. Well, I can't say I'm happy to be spied on, but as long as you're here, you can make yourselves useful. I've got a situation on my hands. God, where to start? First off, we've heard that some of Liberty Buchanan's army are coming this way looking for easy pickings. Normally, we could manufacture some turrets and defend ourselves, but with this strike on... A strike? So that's what's going on. See, this whole place is run by a complex computation engine we built a while back. It does everything. Hiring, scheduling, production quotas, payroll, and until a few weeks ago, it worked like a charm. Then it started to get buggy. Shifts and quotas were changed in strange ways. New hires were put in positions they were obviously unsuited for. At first, I went with it. The engine had never been wrong before, but it kept getting worse. There have been incidents, accidents. Those accidents have sparked worker unrest, and unfortunately, Ludlow, my new chief of security, seems to be one of those bad hires. He's chasing Celine Crow, the worker's leader, around like a rabid dog, causing as much damage as she is. You will not be a rabid dog. Get down to the factory and see what's what. If Ludlow's behaving, help him. If not, take over. Just remember, your priority is not punishing workers. It's getting things running again so we can protect ourselves. Not a whole army, just one of our foraging parties. Damn Reavers have been scouring Colorado's edges for months. They'll strip us like a swarm of locusts. Thank you. And listen, you may have to shoot some workers, but I don't want them put down permanently. Training up new ones takes too long. 
Lazar, my senior tech here, has some new non-lethal weapons we're working on. Lazar, you have clearance to provision the Rangers with a batch of NLWs. Please prep the supplies. You got it, boss. Talk to me when you're ready to gear up, Rangers. Die. You go with them. Once they have the NLWs, take them down to the factory and help out while they're there. They'll need someone who knows the layout. Of course, Administrator. Rangers, I am at your disposal. Excellent. Then get going. All this for me, Rangers. By any means necessary. Rangers, let's get you outfitted for the factory. Die? I have the non-lethal weapons Markham asked me to give your friends. Thank you, researcher Blazer. Rangers, this is Laser Blazer, a researcher in our R&D department, and its sales liaison. It's Lazar, actually. Accent on Lazar. But yes, I'm your P.O.P. for R&D. Great! Have a look! Oh, uh, just to warn you, I do have to charge a $1 processing fee for each item. Sorry. These should all be free. But, uh, 91 bucks for everything? That's still a bargain. By the way, the weapon classes you get depend on the skills of your squad. But, uh, to name a few, there are no disruption rocket launchers, SMGs, flamethrowers, and pistols. Our next objective is finding Carl Ludlow, security chief. He will be on the factory level. Proceed to the elevator on the west end of this floor. Dudes look, uh, well, armed? Oh, shit! You're the Rangers, huh? Team November in the flesh! Oh, cool. Maybe you can help me, then. I'm supposed to present my new prototype to Markham ASAP. Problem is, I need two biometric governors to monitor the highs and lows of the dopamine release cycle. But there's only two in the lab, and that nerd over there, BF, has the other one. It's a fucking crime. She's totally wasting it on her bullshit woo-woo prototype. So what do you say? You snag it out of her rig and put it in mine so I can kick her butt at the presentation, and I'll make it worth your while. It's fucking genius! So, you know how much time the assembly line loses to meal breaks? Well, this hooks the workers up to a worker incentive system. Make five widgets, a nutritional pellet gets shot into your mouth. Make five more, another one. They get food and a dopamine kick for hitting their goal and never need to step away from their station. And the best part is, <laughs> it's adjustable. Need to ramp up production? Turn the dial, and they only get a pellet every seven widgets, or ten! All right, fine. Here's some tellurium steel I set aside. Now will you help a brother out? Hell yeah! BF's gonna look like a real dipshit! Her machine is here on the admin level in the job placement office. Mine is down on the factory floor. <laughs> Thanks, bros. Later! Our greatest technological advances are born here in the research and development department. BF's prototype, the other researcher just across the station, is just slightly less inhumane than Ivan's. But as per this quest, Gift of the Magi, his rewards are far superior. Cause uh, where else would you get the recipes for the Elite Energy Exo Armor Set? Alright, 
Now as per the order of quest, let's go to Walsh and get the lowdown on Cookie's goat meat package. Hello, I'm Organic Maintenance Coordinator Walsh. How can I help you? What crate would that be? We ship a lot of crates, you know. We're a factory. Oh, that box. Strange. Thought that had already shipped. You better talk to Jerry in processing to see what the holdup is. Now, where was I? This quest is actually a parody to bureaucratic red tape. Cause uh, as you can see, you will be passed around among clerks. But uh, although I'm heading back to Walsh for the final confirmation, that's not the end of it. Yes, you'll do the back and forth all over again. To break this stupid cycle, you need to have hard ass 9. And thankfully, I have Marshall Kwan with me, my persuasion specialist. Anyway, since the previous vid, the beginning of my Steel Town playthrough, the hard ass skill was already working wonders, and down the road, it will continue to do so. Alright, we're done. Now it's time to release the package. We don't need pre-authorization for that, luckily. Go see Harley. She can help you. Ah, you know, the release authorization is sort of a formality anyway. I think we can fake it. Enjoy that box full of food. Now, where was I? Now, let's go back to Benny Bianchi to address Carla Asphalt Runner's quest. Hot Commodities. This is Steel Town's job placement area, where Assistant Bianchi oversees the testing of new Steel Town employees to find their best fit. Greetings, fellow employees. Welcome to the Steel Town Job Placement Center. Oh, you're back! You should probably start heading down to the factory to deal with those dreadful workers. But if you want to take a placement test, it'll only take a minute or so. Yes, I remember. What did she want to ask about? Uh, a note? Let me see that. Remember, Jay, 60-40 means 60 for me, 40 for you. X-O-X-O-B. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I found a note on the floor the other day that seems connected. Look at this. Hey B, when is that ITL chick making the run? Freezing our asses off out here and no show. Who knew hijacking was so much work? XOXO J. Looks like this B was setting Carla up to get robbed by J. Hmm. Now who could it be? Oh! <gasps> it must be Bernice, my assistant! Oh no, how could she? Listen, we have to get this cleared up right away. Get a confession out of her and I'll send you to Abby with the evidence. Oh. Oh. I don't know what you're talking about. I would never, never. Okay, I did it. But my boyfriend Jay forced me to do it. You don't know what he's like. Listen, what if I get that crate back from Carla and we forget the whole thing? I'll make it worth your while. Or no, 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 no. Carla might still say something. We need a patsy. Oh, I got it. Pin it on Bernice. Make her confess. I'll pay you double for that. Okay, fine. 
Here, I'll deal with the rest of it. Just tell Carla I'll send someone to collect the Warbot as soon as I can. Even though we agreed not to report Bianchi to Markham, you can still choose to do so. Cause uh, smuggling Warbots, while there is a looming war against the Eastern gangs, is just fucking bad. And uh, maybe I'll report her later in the game. Anyhow, as per the gift of the Magi quest, let's get the biometric shit from BF's prototype. Okay, now let's check back on the refugees at the gates. Again for sorting out the crate rangers. Still waiting for someone to pick it up though. Take it easy. The serial killer strikes again. Who could it be? Hey Rangers! Ha! Boxes were finally delivered! We got enough goat now to keep us fed for weeks! Thanks for making this happen! Looks like meat's back on the menu, folks! You hungry? Yes, I know, this video was devoid of combat, but uh, don't fret, cause the next one will be different, so stay tuned in. And that is all there is for now, thanks for watching. Also check out other videos from Sabbathman Philippines and don't forget to subscribe. See you on my next vid, peace out ya.